Brigadier Sir Philip John Denton Toosey was born in Upton Road in 1904 and he moved here to Rosemount in 1910. Over the course of his life, he played a role in the lives of many, many people from all walks of life. From Liverpool to Lima, from Baring's Bank to the bridge on the River Kwai, and from Oxton to Africa. To his men, he was the colonel and later the brig. And to the thousands of people he met over the course of his working life, he was simply Mr. Toosey. But to one man, he was a figure of such significance that he changed the course of this man's life. Sergeant Major Teru Saito was second in command at Tamakan in Thailand when Colonel Toosey and his men marched into the bridge camp on the River Kwai, whistling the tune of Colonel Bogey. Saito was a regular army officer from the Imperial Japanese Army, and although his methods of discipline were brutal, Toosey always said that Saito knew how to handle men, and there formed an unlikely bond between the two of them, based on mutual respect. Toosey rang cons rung concessions out of Saito for his men, such as rest or yazume days, a canteen, and the right to discipline his own men rather than leave that to the Japanese. In return, he agreed to keep the camp clean and morale high, which in itself saved hundreds of lives. In 1943, Tuzi was involved in a plot to help two officers and several, seven soldiers escape from Tamakan camp. The men were all captured and executed. Tuzi told Saito that only he had known of the escape plan, and as such, he was subjected to a severe beating and was forced to stand to attention for 24 hours in the tropical heat, a humiliation initiated by Saito as a way to show the Kempi Tai, the Japanese equivalent of the Gestapo, that he had dealt with the situation. Saito's actions undoubtedly saved Tuzi from an even more unpleasant fate. At the end of the war, when Tuzi was asked to help screen the Japanese and Korean guards for war crimes, he told the investigators that Saito should be set free. This made an enormous impression on the Japanese. In 1974, he wrote to Tuzi, For a long period of time, I have been harbouring the wish to meet you and express my thanks to you. I especially remember in 1945, when the war ended and when our situations were completely reversed. I was gravely shocked and delighted when you came to shake me by the hand, as only day before you were prisoner. You exchanged friendly words with me, and I discovered what a great man you were. Even after winning, you were not arrogant or proud. You are the type of man who is a real bridge over the battlefield. A decade later, in what would have been Tuzi's 80th year, Saito came to Britain at the invitation of Professor Peter Davis, Tuzi's first biographer. They visited the grave in Landican Cemetery, and Saito expressed surprise that there was no great monument, but a simple headstone. He asked to spend a few moments at the grave to say a prayer, for he had converted to Christianity after the war. Later that afternoon, he came here to tea with Patrick and Penny and saw 20 rows mount. He returned to Thailand and he wrote to Peter, I feel very fine because I finished my own strong duty. One thing I regret, I could not visit Mr. Philip Tuzi when he was alive. He showed me what a human being should be. He changed the philosophy of my life.